All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special podcast from UGASports.com. I am Dane Young, and uh, I'm going to bring in Coach Jim Donnan, as always, here. And, Coach, we have a, a very special conversation with a great guest. Yeah, we we're fortunate to have Daniel Jeremiah from the NFL Network. Uh, over the years, I've built up a friendship with him, uh, talking about different players. And even though he played at Appalachian, he is a good guy. <laughs> and uh, we're. Uh, we know about that Appalachian Marshall background, but uh, Daniel was really a, a big, big plus for our viewers and listeners to have you come on because you are the the guy as far as checking out players. And of course, you know, everybody's got websites and all, and I, I'm basically on this one to promote Kirby and stand up for Kirby when all these people are getting on it. But the main thing, we got plenty of players here that are going to be draftable or maybe free agents. And hopefully you can give us your opinion on them and uh, tell us what's going on, but welcome to the show. Oh, I appreciate you having me coach. You know, I do anything for you. I, I can tell your, uh, uh, your audience about my one Georgia experience, which was uh, out of high school. I went to Northeast Louisiana, which is now Louisiana Monroe. And so I, I red shirt. Um, uh, then I get into the lineup as, as a quarterback, as a red shirt freshman, and we play Arkansas. Uh, I think we played him in Little Rock at the end of the at the end of the game. A defensive tackle named Melvin Bradley. He he hits me. I get a little sternoclavicular sprain. So they said it might take a week or two weeks. So the next week we play Louisiana Tech. I'm definitely out that week. So then the following week we've got Georgia, who's number three in the country. This is this is uh, two or no sorry this is 1997. Is that right? Yeah, 1997. Yeah, who was so, the coach in Georgia then? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, some real good-looking fellow. I can't remember his name, but but uh, so I, I remember watching the tape and seeing uh, uh, Champ Bailey and and seeing all the guys you had on that team, which was absolutely loaded. And I thought, you know what? I think this thing could probably use another week. So I went <laughs> ahead and uh, I sat that one out. I think it was 44 to three or something like that. But I, I was uh, I was more than willing to miss the trip to Athens. Yeah, I never that knew that you were on that trip, but. Uh... We, we, we threw a screen pass to Hans Ward like on the first play of the game and he went the distance, but uh, we had some pretty good players there. But our format today for our fans is going to be Dane's going to bring up the names and you can just give us your thoughts on them. Now I might yeah. energy with something, but uh, the main thing for us is just the low key and let them, let them go, Dane. Yeah, and if you're listening to this on the audio version, I encourage you to go check out our YouTube channel because you get to see that sweet Appalachian State helmet behind Daniel, uh, which is one of the better college football helmets in, in recent years. Um, so, Daniel, let's start with uh, who we think will likely be Georgia's top draftee, and that's going to be Aziz Ojolari. Yeah, he's an interesting one. I mean, the tape, the tape is really good. I mean, you play him standing up, you put his hand on the ground. He's got really good hands. You see a lot of press pull. You'll see uh, uh, knocking the hands down. He had a good, a good battle with Leatherwood. I thought he got him pretty good in the Alabama game, just one in the hand fight there. Um, he can convert a little speed to power. He annihilates tight ends. Uh, so my, my thing with him is in this weird year that we're in, I don't know how dang big he is. So he's listed at 6'3", 240. And as coach knows, there's a big difference from somebody that's actually 6'2", 238 versus somebody who's 6'3 and a half, 250, which is the the range you could be looking at here. So I'm anxious to see how big he is, how long he is. I thought he played pretty long um, for an edge rusher there, but I, I think he's going to end up going in, in the middle to back half of one when it's all said and done. Yeah, and real quickly, could you explain to the fans how the uh, combine is going to work this year? Yeah, well, it's really kind of non-existent. So the combine is just going to be medical. So they're going to they're going to get these guys in, and I believe I don't even know exactly where they're doing it. I think it's regionally. Instead of having them all come into Indianapolis, I believe they're going to do them at some regional hospitals. But um, the teams will have the get the medical information that way. But there's no there's no workout like we've seen in years past in Indy where these guys are getting uh, weighed, measured, and running and doing all that stuff in front of us. Uh, that's not going to happen this year. So it's going to be all about the pro day. Um, that's where you'll get all those official measurements let's move on to uh the conversations around this guy right now from what i'm reading are, are very similar to when he was recruited to georgia tyson campbell great athlete uh what did he put on film he's he's a tough one for me um uh, because obviously the height weight speed is off the charts um and, you know they play kind of in that quarter turn he's got phenomenal play speed you can see it in his ability to recover um, you know, the issue with me is just he, he kind of had a lot of blood on his hands down the field. You watch the Alabama game, Waddle got him, 
bunch of those receivers in the SEC. It was a good group. Uh, he just gave up some plays vertically. So I, my question was, can you really find and play the ball? Um, I don't have any questions about his athletic ability, his movement. He's very fluid, smooth. I think he's tough. Um, he even played play a little inside, play a little outside. But uh, to me, that is kind of the, the big question on him is, is do you trust him to find and play the ball down the field because you love everything else? Yeah, you got that right on the money. I think the thing about watching him in practice is he does that pretty well, but he's had some games where he's right there out in front of everybody, like against Florida or Alabama, where they throw the fade, and even South Carolina, where you know he just didn't play the ball in the air, and that's pretty vivid when they get touchdowns. So, but uh, I would err on the side of of watching him. I think he's just really a special kid. The way he he can the burst that he has, he has an oh, unbelievable yeah. catch up type. But you got him right on the money there. I I, I think. Uh, he's a guy that somebody's going to really be happy with. It's a loaded defensive back group for Georgia in this draft. And next up on that is, is Eric Stokes, a guy who yeah. was unheralded when he came to Georgia, but had quite a career in Athens. Yeah. You know, it's funny. And I've got this question from a lot of teams as they're going through these players is Campbell versus Stokes. And this is a conversation that's have that's taken place in most places. I, I would say it's probably 60, 40, uh, Campbell over Stokes when you talk to people around the league, probably for what coach is talking about, just because of those raw tools. But Stokes, you know, his track background, you know, he can scoot too. So you've got, again, height, weight, speed. Um, he's a little bit sticky. I, I'd give Campbell a little bit of an edge just in terms of the fluidity. Um, but I thought Stokes played the ball better. You can find it. He's got a lot more ball production. He can find and play it. A Florida game, you saw the, the pick six there. I thought both these kids were tough. I ended up, and, I, and I'll say I'm on the minority of that, I ended up with Stokes just over Campbell. But I thought, you know, I gave him the same exact grade. I think both those kids are going to end up going in the second round. And the thing about Stokes is just on the tape, he doesn't give up the plays that Campbell did. And yeah. he's uh, always around the ball. And he's a guy that's really benefited from some good coaching here, good technique, and uh, has, has hung around and has put himself in a position, like you say, to be a high draft choice. Those are probably the consensus top three guys from Georgia in this draft. So I'm going to kind of go position groupings a little bit here. Just staying with defensive backs, DJ Daniel uh, is a name that he, he had a good senior bowl performance, but uh, didn't actually put a whole lot of stuff on tape this season. Yeah, there's not a lot of ball production. Um, you know, when I watched him, I thought he's kind of some average traits, right? Average feet, average hips. Um I had a little bit of concern about that pure top speed. When you, when you watch some guys get on top of him, he can be a little bit handsy. Um, you know, that, then you go back and watch some 2019 stuff. I thought he was better in 2019. Um, I thought he was competitive. Uh, again, a little bit grabby, a little bit handsy. I, had, I have kind of a late draftable grade on him. So you're talking, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh round range. Yeah, I mean, he's a guy that benefited from being in the system and came in as a JUCO guy that's going to make – some team uh, with his special teams ability and all that. But uh, just want to ask you a question off the, this little routine here. So how will you and, and uh, the, the network handle these pro days now? Yeah. A little bit different with uh, on site. I know uh, uh, you were able to go to the Senior Bowl and you did a terrific job with the broadcast. Uh, you really were right on top of it. But how are you going to handle these pro days? We're going to do a ton of them, Coach. I've got a uh... – as, uh, as the old school coaches can appreciate, I still use a yellow pad. So I got, uh, I mean, we are like, I just run through some of them and more have been added. I mean, like March 11th, Clemson, Texas, March 12th, North Dakota State, Oklahoma, 17th, Georgia, uh, 23rd, Bama, 24th, SC, 26th, BYU, Michigan, VTech. I mean, it goes on and on. We're, we're going to have all those covered. So we're going to have cameras there. Uh, we might have a reporter there. We're going to cover them either from home or in the studio in Los Angeles, but we'll have cameras there and we'll, we'll, we'll kind of blow out the pro day coverage like we've never done before this year on NFL network. That's going to give me something to watch. That's for sure. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Uh, that'll be good. Maybe you need to get me over there and be the reporter for Georgia. But that, uh, that, That's what I'm saying, but I don't know. I don't know. You might be too handsome for our network coach. Hey, you have to back that off. <laughs> That's pretty unbelievable for you to say that. But uh, it's good to know, though, that our fans will be able to watch that uh, and, and yeah. some of our competitors, too. And I don't know if you realize, but we actually play Clemson in the first game next year. So uh, that's going to be a heck of an opener. I went and saw uh, 
with Georgia at Clemson. Uh, well, that was Gurley. Gurley was there. That was, uh, I think, Deshaun Watson. That was a fun game. Unbelievable. All right, who we got next, Dane? We've got Richard LeCount, a staple at Georgia for a, a few years, both with his personality and his play. So, it, to me, we when the team I worked for uh, early in my career was the Baltimore Ravens, and we had this thing called Red Stars. So, these were players that no matter what round they were going to be picked, you wanted these guys on your team. And of all the Georgia players, this is this would be my Red Star. I, I love, I absolutely love watching this kid play. I think he's a pure free safety. He can give you some some coverage ability down the slot if you want to do that. He's got outstanding range, quickness, instincts. Um, he's not the biggest guy in the world, as you guys know, but, man, he, he plays 100 miles an hour. He will stick his face in the fan when he comes down in the alley. Um, he's got ball skills. I mean, one-handed pick against Arkansas kind of jumped off to me. But I, I've talked to some teams, too, that really like this kid. I, to me, he's, he's somebody I would target in the third or fourth round, um, and that might be higher than some people expect. But I, I love the way this kid plays. Hey, I couldn't say more about him than you just said. I don't know that uh, certainly George's colors are red, but he's definitely a guy that presents himself on the field uh, week in and week out, competes and practice. And, uh, you know, he's got the it factor that every team needs that you know he's going to play his best all, all the time. And you got a bunch of stars up there, but you got some of these guys are prima donnas. He'll fit in with any program. And uh, I'm glad you feel the same about him. He brings a lot of energy. I mean, Dane, when you when you guys have been around him, but I mean, just when you, even when you're watching the tape, not even seeing him live, he, he is just a he's a fireball, man. Lots of energy. I loved it. Well, I mean, even little stuff with him, like the the final uh, play of the Peach Bowl where he's injured, but he gets to run out there for one last play. That tells you exactly what both Kirby Smart and the team thought about him. That that was important for him to have that moment. Yeah, that's a great nugget. I didn't even know that one. I'm gonna jot that one down. But that's uh, yeah, he's fun to watch. One more defensive back. Let's move over. He started as a wide receiver at Georgia, but Mark yeah. Webb, they call him Hammerhead sometimes. I think that was his Twitter handle. Um, a physical player, a uh, run defense, uh, really versatile guy in Georgia's defensive backfield. Yeah, you know, I have the same notes about the wide receiver to corner to safety to me. And and when you look at him, the thing that I like is I think he's got really good eyes. He sees it. He can trigger. Um, I think he's going to have to find a role on third or fourth down, you know, find a role for him in some sub packages, let him cover some kicks. Um, I just question the, I question the pure speed and, and top end athleticism there. Um, but somebody that I think is going to find a role on, on special teams and he's going to make a roster. Yeah, how would you compare him to J.R. Reed from last year? I thought J.R. Reed had a little more twitch, Coach, uh, when I watched him. I had to go back through and look at my notes there, but that was that's off the top of my head. Yeah, I think uh, pretty much the same. But the, the thing you got in Webb, though, is another guy that, you know, Kirby puts all that emphasis on special teams, and he, he, yeah. they got good tape on these guys doing that. And you might just say, as a scout, if you were a scout for the Ravens, how much does that play in the difference in taking a guy or not taking a guy? I mean, it's not a rhetorical question, but how much does that lean into what you try to do? That's what day three is, you know, that day three of the draft. When you get down to those last rounds, it's how does this guy, well, I don't want to draft somebody that's not going to make my team. So in order to make my team at this point in the draft, you better be able to cover kicks. And it's one thing to say, wow, this guy's been, you know, a starting receiver for four years I think he can cover kicks I, he never had to do it versus having a guy you can say no I, this guy's done it and he's done it at a really high level so he's got a fighting chance to make our team that's that's huge when you get to day three we'll move to the middle of the defense with a really physical tackler in Monty Rice yeah just just again somebody who's kind of a uh, a real instinctive player which I feel like we say that about a lot of these Georgia kids and that speaks to kind of how they've been coached um, sawed off. He's got kind of those short arms, um, you know, really, really can find the ball. I thought with him in coverage, very instinctive in coverage. I'm, I'm curious to see what he runs once he gets to the pro day to see how much juice he has. Um, but again, I thought senior bowl week was good, physical, aggressive kid. Um, so, you know, he'll it, be an interesting one to keep an eye on. Another point there, um, you know, a lot of our fans were talking about some of the opting out and getting ready for the senior bowl. Uh, you, you've always been involved with that. To what extent does that senior bowl play in these scouts and everybody uh, as compared to maybe playing in a, in a bowl game and not doing it? 
Yeah, I mean, it just shows you they're competitive. Um, so that's a bonus. It's absolutely a bonus to have there when they do that. And you get to see good on good. Now, the nice thing about the SEC kids is we see good on good every week. So it's not – I don't think it's as big in terms of their evaluation as maybe some of these other kids. Um, so, yeah, to me, he's a, he's an interesting one. I was fumbling around to find my notes on him. I, I finally got to him here too. I was doing it off the top of my head. The one thing about him, guys, that to me, it just he got swallowed a little bit when he got engaged, and I think that goes a little bit to his lack of length. Um, so that'll be, you know, that'll be interesting to see how uh, how he can develop from that standpoint. Tennessee game was a really good one uh, when you watch that one. I guess I would say that a lot about guys against Tennessee this this past year, but he played he played really good against them. One of the heartbreaking stories from the Senior Bowl was Malik Herring tearing his ACL. Yeah. Really productive player for Georgia for uh, really every time he got on the field, it seemed like he was engaging uh, really well in the trenches. What do you think of Malik Herring? Yeah, he's interesting because he's got some inside outside versatility. Um, he's strong at the point of attack. He plays really, really hard. Um, you know, he's got some violent hands. He flashed a little quick little arm over. There's some some hip stiffness there, um, and then obviously with the with the ACL there in the Senior Bowl, the health question exists. But uh, I still think even with the injury that you'll probably see him go in, in the uh, you know fifth round would probably be the sweet spot of where I would say he'll probably end up going. Yeah, along with this guy, too bad he got hurt, but he's the guy you know is going to play every down for you, mm -hmm. and uh, you know it's hard to get big guys that play with that kind of effort. Yep, and just point of attack stuff. I mean, just really, really strong at the point. And one thing that, that Dane did getting ready for this uh, was to uh, get your – that's Kirby wanting to know what, what you think about this guy. No, but uh, <laughs> Dane asked some of our people on the site to uh, uh, ask a question of you, and we want to throw a couple of those in. Yeah. In this. Yeah, and uh, one of those ended up being about Malik Herring, just how much you think that injury could impact what he could have been had the ACL not happened. Yeah, I, I think, look, he goes through the process, finishes up strong, has a great pro day. I think, you know, he had a chance maybe to sneak in to, to day two, which would have put him kind of in the bottom of the third round. Uh, but, you know, it's just really unfortunate. But I, I still think, again, he's going to get picked. And I, and I think that fifth round to me is, is a nice, nice spot to, to pull the trigger there. It's not like, you know, it's not an Achilles, it's an ACL. And we've seen, we've seen the recovery time on that improve. And uh, here's a pair of questions, but they're kind of a similar subject and it's about the defense. And, and this was our last defensive guy on our list. So I'll ask these together. Yeah. Um, when evaluating players, especially on defense, do scouts take into account how often Georgia rotates and therefore how individual stats may not be quite as high. And then similarly, are there portions of Georgia's scheme, especially defensively that you think could limit uh, what Georgia players do as prospects on tape? Yeah, no, I, I, the last question, no. I think what they do schematically makes them – they're easy to evaluate. You know, they play a lot of that quarter turn, uh, but to the sideline stuff with their corners, but almost everybody's doing that in college football now, so that's not that's not unique to Georgia. Um, uh, but to me, when you look at the stat – I'm not going to put – scouts don't put as much into stats and accolades, I think, as some people assume. I got into kind of a little bit of a Twitter argument with somebody about this a few weeks back when they were saying – uh, you know, this guy was first team all conference or he won this award. How come you're that low on him or that high? I'm like in eight years in the draft room, we never mentioned any of that stuff. There's no like, you know, I really like this player, but man, he finished second team all conference. So we're going to have to drop him down a little. I know he's big and fast and really fits our defense and is a great player, but dang it, those sports writers in the Southland conference didn't make him first team. So we're not going to pick him. That's not how it works. And the same similarly with stats. Now, we talked about the corners being able to find and play the ball. Obviously, you're going to have some production eventually, you know, when, you, when you've been playing that much. But whether a guy has, you know, seven interceptions or two interceptions, it's not going to, it's not going to have that much of a difference. It's just can he find and play the football. Let's go to uh, Georgia's offensive line. There's two guys there. Let's start. We were talking about strength at Georgia. No one's stronger than Ben Cleveland. I mean, I – I don't know how this kid hasn't been recruited to the WWE already. I mean, whenever his football career is over, he's got a wrestling career lined up. I mean, that's the easiest thing ever. He is massive. And, I, you know, you see the dimensions, and it's 6'0", 6'3", 354 pounds. So you have an idea of what that composition is going to look like. Then you go down there and you see him in person. This dude's not fat. Like, that is a – he's just, just a – 
he's a piece of mass out there. Um, but I, I liked him. I thought to me, the gap scheme teams are going to like him more than kind of the zone teams. Uh, he's got real knockoff power in the run game. I thought his pad level was good. You can see him come off and displace guys in pass pro and, and being that height inside, you'd be a little bit tall, a little bit narrow at times. And that can, can give him some issues there. Some of the redirect stuff is, is, going to be a challenge um but I, to me i think he's he's probably going to find his way into that you know fourth round range is, is where i would project him it's interesting that he just didn't get a chance to be the full-time starter for a long period of time there uh at georgia but the, there's not many human beings walking around that look like this guy yeah and he's going to shoot to break the record for the bench press he's going to try to hit 50 if he can Jeez. i mean that's the goal for for ben but he, he's got He's got a lot of uh, quality size-wise. You just can't – there's no way to – but move, movement of the feet, pass pro, that's going to be the big deal for him. But he, he's you definitely right on with him. So, who we got next here? Uh, well, well, the notion with Ben is that he probably made himself some money by coming back to play his senior season. Is that the case, you think, Daniel? Yeah, no, I thought he put some good stuff out there this year. Um, I wish he would have been able to uh, make it to the Senior Bowl week so we could have seen him down there just to get another just another opportunity for him to, to show what he could do there. Uh, but, yeah, he's interesting. He's definitely interesting. Uh, the other offensive lineman is longtime center Trey Hill. You guys ever have any smaller offensive linemen? I mean, she many Christmas. This kid, another one, and he's, you know, 330 pounds out there um he's uh you know with some inside experience the, the one thing i'll start with this this the shotgun snaps have to improve yeah he, he had some issues with some of his shotgun snaps when he studied him last year but he's got for a big guy 330 pounds he's got quick feet um a lot of just kind of upper upper wrestle type guy like he's just gonna torque you and turn you with his upper body power um he's got some quick feet i think his ability to adjust at the second level is going to be a little bit of an issue for him um but man he, he can he can down block and wash down the line of scrimmage because he's just so big and strong and powerful um so to me angles to the second level being able to adjust at the second level that's going to be an area where he's going to look to improve yeah another nugget you can mention on your draft show is the guy graduated in three years from georgia hard well, to I'm do writing that, that in right now i'm writing that in right now that's coach. pretty strong and he got the ma most massive thighs i've ever seen of any human <laughs> being just uh ham hawks just the biggest uh, the first spring practice that he was here Nobody had talked about him much, you know, uh, you know, because all the other guys here, you know, Fields and all those yeah. guys. But the first week, every coach I talked to said, hey, we got a guy here. This He's in the top 10 on our team already. And that was, you know, mm -hmm. three years ago. He can play guard or center and uh, very intelligent. Yeah, that's good. That's a good nugget, too, on him graduating within three years. I mean, again, these guys, I, I'd hate to be the poor little, you know, 18 year old freshman that had to line up inside against this Georgia, this Georgia group. I mean, that's a lot of, that's a massive humanity coming at you. One question from uh, the dog then at UGA sports.com and offensive lineman, do Georgia offensive linemen tend to have more position versatility than most programs? Oh, that's a good question. Um, no, I, I, I'd have to go back and really look at it. I mean, it's definitely a feather in your cap when you can see guys play other positions, you know, as opposed to just projecting somebody. But I think we're seeing that more and more. I think that's a trend we've seen around college football where you want to get your best five on the field and the inevitable injuries that pop up. We see more of these guys that have moved uh, moved around and have some uh, position flex. So uh, it's great. I, I, I enjoy it when we get to see it because it's a lot easier to see somebody do something than to have to guess if they can do it. And one last prospect for Georgia. He only played one year in Athens, uh, transferring from Florida State. That's tight end Trey McKitty. Yep, Trey is uh, interesting. I mean, you've got six catches on the year, but then you watch him, and I'm like, this guy can run. He can get down the seam. Um, he's tough and aggressive, physical in the run game. Um, he battles in there. Sometimes he'll get outmatched a little bit, but his want to in the run game is really, really good. Um, I thought he had a good senior bowl week. Um, when, when you watched him down there, he's not a natural hands catcher. There's a lot of body catches. When you study him on the tape, you'll see some double catches. Um, but he's interesting, you know, so he's another one. I, I, the grade I gave him kind of puts him in that fifth, you know, fifth round, sixth round, which sounds crazy when you consider the guy caught six balls last year. Yeah. He's got so much upside, but you got to go on and there comes a time where you got to do it. But I think our scheme last year with all the quarterback turnover, trying to win some games 
we didn't throw the ball that much early and but he he's a guy that on the hoof gets your attention and i'm glad he got that exposure at the senior bowl and uh two other guys that you could just go just kind of gloss over because georgia people certainly know about him first of all uh, jamie newman the quarterback that was yeah. they came here and and uh, left after the COVID situation and then justin fields yeah you know jamie i think is a late is a late guy um if he gets drafted i think you're talking about probably later on day three just I, I felt bad for him. He just did not have a good week down there at the Senior Bowl. And so when you when you didn't play the last year, and then your last image of him is is a lot of turnovers down there in the practices at the Senior Bowl. Just didn't look really comfortable. So he's you know he's got he's got some tools as you guys know. He's got some raw tools that you can work with. And and to me, he kind of fits in that mold as a late day three developmental player. And then Justin, I mean, look, it, it's a really good quarterback draft. I, I think we're going to see I, – for sure we're going to see four of these kids go in the top ten. We might end up seeing five of them. And Justin, when you watch him, and, and Coach and I have been texting about him for a long time, but he's he can drive the football as well as anybody. He's a phenomenal athlete. The toughness and the competitiveness, I mean, you just go to the Clemson game to see all you needed to see from that standpoint. Um, he checks those boxes. To me, my, my only hang-up with him is just I want to see him pull the trigger. And I know some people have said, well, he's you know he gets stuck on his first read. No, no, no. When you watch him, you can see him work through his reads. It's just he's got to let it go. And I think some of that can just be the difference of this guy. He's not, he's not five yards in the clear. He doesn't need to be five yards in the clear. Throw him open. Throw with a little bit of anticipation. Uh, those windows, when you get to the league, are going to be real small. So you've got to be able to, to, to let it rip. So that's something, you know, and some folks believe that's a major issue, that that's tough to overcome. Others believe that that's just – that's going to come with time as he continues to play more. So there's a lot to work with. And, again, the thing I hang my hat on with him is, is, is really the toughness and the competitiveness. Those are the guys you usually like to bet on. Plus, there's not many guys – they can run that fast. They can throw like he can. That, that uh, he, he's among the faster guys that have played here. So that's going to help him too. And I think holding on to the ball is something coaching quarterbacks you worry about. Uh, you want to anticipate in the NFL. You, you got to throw guys open because you got those guys covering them. And he he's got to work on that. But we got one more player that we wanted you to uh, look at and see what okay. you think of him. We got a little tape on him. Let's see what you think of this guy. Yeah, and you may be a little bit biased here, Daniel. I'm going to share my screen for this. So I, I may lean on Coach to give me some unbiased content here. So <laughs> way back in 1999, uh, Coach Donnan was here in Athens. Uh, Daniel, you were with uh, Appalachian State. I, I was 10 years old in East Dublin, Georgia, but that doesn't matter. Uh, so we're going to play this and get Coach Donnan's opinion of Daniel Jeremiah, the quarterback. Well, he looks uh, good walking to the line of scrimmage. Very confident. It'd probably be some kind of role option. There it is. That's happy stuff there. Jerry Moore special <laughs> and uh, turns it up pretty well. Uh, very talented guy there. Look at this quickness on the stop and throw. I mean, you know, doesn't mind throwing in the double coverage. I mean, he's got the arm to hang it up there. And uh, those are against Georgia Southern. One more play against Georgia Southern from that game. Oh, gosh. You guys are terrible. He moves on the edge, man. Anticipates that. How many times did you throw that in practice? That was Jerry's favorite pass, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. A little half roll there. I mean, the the one you showed with the first one, that was, I mean, G-load. That was the offense. I, I remember getting up there after transferring in there, and uh, we I, I was up there, and we go through the first year, through the fall. And we get to the spring, and uh, I go uh, – to my locker and I don't have my red Jersey. I've just got like a white Jersey hanging up in the locker. And I said, Hey, I go to the equipment guy. I said, Hey, you guys gave me the wrong Jersey. I need my red Jersey for praise. Like, no, no, no. This is Appalachian state. We're running G load option. You don't wear a red Jersey in the spring. I said, excuse me. We're live. Oh yeah. You're live. Is, you're live as live gets. I was like, Oh man, I that, I was getting into that, that. that ability to throw across his body and everything like that. But Hey, we just wanted to have a little fun with you. From that. And you look pretty good to me. I'm, I would still recruit you, and uh, you can Coach, play for anybody. That's for sure. Here we go for another, the same play, but want to show throw. Coach, my, my only question, my only question, watching watching this tape of myself here is, I'm beginning to wonder if I was really left-handed. Uh, maybe I just didn't know. I, I don't know. Watching me throw right there, I didn't look so good. I think I might actually be lefty. I thought you had a good release, and not many guys can throw on the run like that. But uh, but uh, I know how. 
busy, but I just want to say on behalf of, uh, of, of me personally and the uh, game of college football, it's just so good to have a guy that works at his craft like you do. You enjoy it, but you know what you're doing and you speak your mind and you got an opinion and you know, Hey, it's hard to please everybody. You can't please them, but you gotta, it's a tough deal to evaluate, but I think the thing that you could explain to the, to the, to our fans here, the jump between college and pro is so humongous. Yeah, it's different. It's definitely a different level. And that's why, um, you know, at the end of the day, you, you try and watch them and you try and you try and figure them out as best you can. But even with the top guys, coach you don't know you don't know until you get them out there and then they're playing against a bunch of grown men and and that's when we all find out there's no more nervous human being on planet earth than a scout at the first mini camp watching the rookie <laughs> class show up i can tell you that because they want to see how you know just like the coaches when they bring the kids in the first day and then the, it's that first shot that you see them it's, it's amazing but uh anything else dane we'll close it out here i know you got a big schedule here daniel but we really appreciate you being on and uh, I hope we uh, our fans realize how big it is for you to give us kind of opinion on and I know it's it's uh, your time's very valuable we appreciate it yeah and we just look forward to the day Daniel that uh, in coming months hopefully that uh, maybe you'll find your way to Athens and see some of these guys in person and we can say hello to you well, I'm looking forward to that you don't even know so hopefully get out there in the fall and see some good uh, good football and then be back there for the pro day next year let's get back to normal and uh, um, I'm ready for that right now let's go all right that's Daniel Jeremiah thanks for listening to our podcast from UGA sports.com <laughs>